much. You may be seated. Amen. 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 It's a chilly morning today, but our hearts are warm, right? Are your hearts warm? Amen. We'll be looking at the book of uh, Paul, or the Christian Paul, uh, the Pauline epistles to the, the Ephesian church, the church at Ephesus. And he said it is written to the saints, and he said they are the consecrated, separated, the called out ones, the saints, and all the faithful all that are faithful. We began a journey on Monday that we, uh, we concluded yesterday about the general overview of the book of Ephesians. Uh, we talked about who Paul was and who uh, the people at Ephesus were and why the letter is written. And the general theme of the book of Ephesians is about the riches of the believer. The riches of the believer. And we know that uh, we said the Ephesians is divided into two parts, chapter 1 to chapter 3, and then chapter 4 to chapter 6, talking about what has happened in the life of a believer, chapter 1 to 3, and then 4 to 6, what ought to happen in his community, or how that ought to affect where he lives. You say there is no dichotomy between secular and spiritual. You cannot say this is spiritual and this is secular. The life of a Christian is one. He is one. So there is nothing secular about a Christian. Everything is spiritual about him. Uh, because he manifests himself as a spirit being, manifesting himself in the physical. That is why when the Bible is talking about many things in Scripture, it's talking about uh, the, 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 the God of Mammon, talking about money, meaning money is spiritual. When the Bible addresses sex and sexual issues, it's talking about that if you get yourself hooked to someone, you are one in him in the spirit, meaning sex is a spiritual thing, it's not a physical thing. So it's not, there is nothing about you as a believer that is physical. So you don't put your life down and say, this is church and this is now my life. Or, and scripture teaches us in Second Corinthians that it's real. What we do not see is real, more real than what we see. Because what we do not see is permanent. That means you cannot say, Muskwewa spirits are not real. Reality is spiritual. Hello? Reality is spiritual. So anything that you do, it is not by the side. No, it is the spiritual. Uh, there is no physical and spiritual. Uh, so the Lord has given you a body within which to move, and that is the physical part to manifest on the earth. But you, in essence, we are talking about you as a person. That's why we say somebody has left us. Though we can see his body, but we say he has left us. Because the body that has been left with us is not him. Isn't it? Hey, come on, people. It's not him, isn't it? So what you are seeing, what you are decorating here is not you. So the one, what we see, what we are competing with is not you. But there's really you inside of you. So we talked about that God has chosen you in him before the foundation of the world. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. That he should show forth uh, his glory. That means he has brought you into adoption of his sons. Uh, his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5. We said he has brought you in the adoption of his So you are his son. Predestined you and shed his blood that you be saved. And that he has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Chapter 1 and verse 3. And he says, because of that, he has taken you, that he show forth his glory. And we said, uh, now Paul makes a prayer to the Ephesians, uh, because of the Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 1, from verse 15 to 22. He's talking about their eyes be enlightened, and today we are going to look at what prayer is. Because he makes two major prayers in the book 
to the Ephesians, which is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 22, and Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 uh, to 23. He's making a prayer to God about the Ephesians, but he's telling them about what he's praying uh, for them. And he said from chapter 2 that he has chosen you who are Gentiles, who are not in the family of God, and brought you in the family of God, and has raised you together. And you are now seated in heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 2 uh, and verse 6. He has lifted you. And because of that, he saved you by his own grace. It was not by your works, for it is by grace that we are saved through faith and it's not of our own works. It's not of our doing. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. So he saved you. He has brought you to himself. Now he has built us up as one body. Now we are all different people, uh, but in one body. We make living stones, building this uh, body of Christ. And because of that, God has uh, chosen you and selected you. Having become uh, a manifestation of God, he goes to chapter 3, verse 10. He says, now to the principalities and power that may know the manifold wisdom of God by the church. That you as a church, God has bought you by his own price so that he can show principalities and powers how great and mighty he is because he has chosen you by himself and he continues to make a prayer from verse 14 and concludes it in verse 20 when he says unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we think or ask according to the power that worketh within us unto him be glory to the church so that is the end of his prayer and we are going to look at uh, those prayers today amen Verse 4, he said, he's talking about unity, that all of us have come together, we are one, united by faith, united by the same spirit, by the same God, by the same Lord. But he's saying that our unity is not uniformity, that we'll not be looking the same, but we are different. In our diversities, as we express and manifest the glory of God, we'll be expressing it differently. And that, therefore, that's why he that ascended also descended uh, Ephesians 4.8 and gave gifts to men Ephesians 4.11 some of them are apostle teachers pastors, evangelists all of them to the edification of the body of Christ and to a perfect man and his goal is that we come to the unity of the faith but the ultimate goal is that we come to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ that we all look like Christ that is the purpose and the goal of our Christian walk. And he says, because of that, something has happened inside of you that you have changed your ways. You now those who are liars now are saying the truth. Those who are gossiping now are speaking in love. And those who are angry are now uh, full of love. Those who are revengeful are now forgiving. And they are building one body of Jesus Christ. And the typology there is that you are like a lady who submits to her husband and a man who loves his wife. You are like a master who does not, uh, uh, you know, misuse his servant and a servant who is obedient to his master. You are like a child who is obedient to the father and the parents that do not exasperate or bring to anger their children. And that is the purpose for which God has ordained us. So he's using that as an example. And he says, now finally, uh, chapter 6, verse 10, be, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And goes on to speak about the spiritual armor. And we are going to see why that is so. Having the overview then, we go back and look at the prayers that Paul is praying. Because if you want to know the right way to pray, you look at the prayers in scripture. You look at the modeling of prayer in scripture. And you look at the examples of prayer in scripture. Before we go to the prayers in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 to 22 and Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 to 23, I want us to read some two uh, portions of scripture. One is Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10 and 11. Give us Ephesians chapter uh, 1 verse 10 and 11 because it's going to help us understand something before we embark on prayers. Prayers. 
Because if it is one of the subjects that is so much talked about is prayer, but if there is a subject that is mostly misunderstood is also prayer. Now, uh, Ephesians, did you get it? Ephesians 10, 1 verse 10 and 11. Uh, if they can't get it, you can get it in yours, in your, in your Bible. Did you carry your Bible? Yeah, open. They say the same things, by the way. Yeah, they say the same things. So read with me, it says. Hey, read, read louder like you mean it. Yeah? To be? Mm -hmm. Did you understand what you just read? Read again. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. Verse 10, read. When you, you, you read the word in whom, what does it mean in who? 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 Who is he talking about? Eh? Let's go back to chapter ten, verse 10. Eh? Chapter, verse 10, it says that in the dispensation of fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Then, in whom, verse 11, mm. who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So you'll notice there the Bible is talking about Christ. But the purpose of God from the ancient of days, from the beginning of time, is that he might gather all of us under him. That he shall place all the governments, both in heaven and on earth, under Christ. So that is the ultimate purpose of God. That what we are uh, experiencing today, everything, every part and every step to, is, is contributing towards putting everything under the subjection of Christ. That God's purpose ultimately is to bring heaven and earth under Christ. And he says that he has predestined that all things might work under his will. So that means when you Get into the place of prayer when you're talking about the posture of prayer or the place of prayer or the attitude of prayer. You must remember this, that God is about bringing everything under Christ. And that eventually everything shall work out to fall under Christ. So we are not looking for other wills or aspirations. Uh, that, that is why God will not meet you at the point of your need. God will meet you at the point of his word. Uh, because if, you are aware, if your need is outside his will, that means he can't bring that under. Uh, no wonder James says, many people you know, have said you can preach and, and perish, you, you can sing and perish, but you can't pray and perish. You can pray, pray and perish. Because the Bible tells us in James that you can pray amiss. Most of you do not have what you, you, you need because you have prayed amiss. You can pray amiss. You can be deep in prayer, but pray amiss. If you're not praying in accordance to his will, that is why the Spirit helps us in our intercession. Uh, verse 29 says, for he prays for us or for the saints in accordance to the will of God. So you must understand the foundation of prayer is that God wants to bring everything under Christ. Not under you, not under your wills, uh -uh, under Christ. So when you begin to read the prayers, you'll understand that God is about exalting Christ. And he has said that in the book of Ephesians, for instance, we have read many places that he says, whether it's Ephesians 2 verse 10, he says that you are his workmanship. 
You are his workmanship. That God made you before the foundation of the world. That, and he has ordained the works by which you shall walk in. So, your prayer should be aligned to the works that God has already ordained for you. And he says that the manifold wisdom of God may be known to principalities and power by the church. That is Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. So you are seeing that everything is about, there is a path that God has ordained for me. It is not the things that I'm seeking for, but I'm aligning myself to the purposes of God. So prayer does not become uh, sending God on errands. Prayer becomes submitting yourself to walk in the will of God. Can you say amen? It is not you sending God on errands, do this and do this and do that. No, it is about submitting yourself because prayer is dialogue, finding to know the heart of God. And you would know because you've been in love before. How many people here have ever been in love? Ever been in love? Hey, come on people, if you've ever been in love... <sighs> do, you, do you remember the feeling? Huh? Do you remember the feeling? Huh? Do you remember the feeling? Can you remember the conversations? Huh? <laughs> In fact, when you break up, that's when you understand you are talking about nonsense, really, isn't it? <laughs> You're talking about nonsense, isn't it? What were we discussing, really? Huh? They are called in marriage sweet nothings, where you just sit and talk about nothing. It doesn't really make sense. But you see, it is not just about the conversation uh, that you are concerned about. It's about the person, isn't it? So you can talk about anything and nothing, so long as you are just with that person. You know, the problem is, if you do not understand that, then you think prayer is about the words you express. So most Christians have concentrated on the technicalities of prayer rather than the object of prayer. And the object of prayer is God, isn't it? The technicalities of prayer is how you are praying. So you are thinking about the language. How do I express myself? What version can I use? No, God is not concerned about those things. God is concerned about your love for him. And when you have love for him, you can speak anyhow, right? Because when you are with a person, and, and it is not screaming, because when you get, how do you know somebody is getting closer and closer in the places of intimacy? There are things that happen as you get closer to intimacy, isn't it? One thing that happens is that there is a reduction of volume. Hey, come on, people. The closer you get to someone, the lower your voice gets. And the more intimate you are, the less words you speak. If you remembered when you were in love, when you really were in love, there are moments you just used to sit, talk about nothing. <laughs> because even silence is communication. You understand? And the days that you went home remembering the date was the days when you speak, speak, speak less, isn't it? The, the, those days that you didn't speak a lot. Because you, you just allowed the moment to take it. You understand? <laughs> the intimacy. So how would you know that we are getting into the intimate place of prayer? When there is uh, very little of the volumes. Because the prayers today are no prayers. They are, they are, they are like sp uh, screaming context. Because we have this mindset of a, a, a very old God with a long beard with a hearing problem. And we have these terrible children that are screaming for attention. Everyone is screaming on the top of his voice. In fact, if you want to know somebody is a prayer warrior, you can see the veins that are passing through uh, their necks and the hoarseness of their voice. You know, ah, man, you are deep in prayer. <laughs> hmm? But you see, when Jesus was with the disciples, they looked at him. And most of the intimate prayers of Jesus you'll find is just, you know, he's... Look at the prayer of Anna, for instance. The Bible says the words were not coming out, isn't it? Her lips were moving, but not words. In fact, the prayer was so intimate that the backslidden pastor was thinking that she was drunk. 
And she looked and said, woman, keep that bottle away from you. He says, sir, I am not drunk, but out of the heaviness or the troubles of my heart, my heart pours out. He says, the Lord will answer you, isn't it? Because it is out of the depth of her heart that she was speaking. She was in a place of intimacy with God. But what was concerning Anna, you would remember that she was not just crying at that time. Uh, you realize that when she realized, because if your prayers are answered, even before you see the manifestation thereof, you will know that they are answered. Because there is a witness in your spirit. The Bible says, As, uh, then Anna arose and went home and washed her face and started to eat. She knew in her heart, that is answered. She was not coming from the prayer room thinking, oh, I know, maybe God will answer. No, if you know, you know. <laughs> so you have that thing, young people. If you know, you know, isn't it? Yeah. If you know, you know. So the will of God, you must understand, when you get into a place of prayer, you are God's workmanship. You are showing forth his glory. There are works that are created for you before the foundation of the earth that you are predestined to be conformed to his image. So you are not seeking the things that you think you, you need. You are seeking about your path in life. And God will send resources in accordance to your purpose and mission. So whatever he requires, that is why we read Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 that he has given us all things, all things. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. If you read 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says, In according to his divine power, has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. All things. So if you have read Ephesians correctly, you will understand Ephesians chapter 1 to chapter 3, that God has already given us all things. So your prayer is not give me. <laughs> Huh? Because scripture has already said God has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. So our assignment and challenge is just to access those things that he has already given. God has already given us all things. And the scripture throughout, if you read scripture throughout, you notice a common theme running through is that God has already given God has done whatever is required for you to have all that you need. Now, prayer is a place where you position yourself to receive what God has already given. When you'll be looking at these prayers, you'll notice that prayer is not a shopping list. Eh? Prayer is not a shopping list. It's not a place where you say, Kesho ni kesha, wacha ni chukwe kitabu ni andike shopping list. I have 15 prayer requests. Huh? <laughs> so that now you petition God. The whole night you petition God, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. Because prayer, if prayer is dialogue and communication between two of us, it is not just a screaming context, it's not just a demand, it's not just a shopping list, it's a place of building relationships. Prayer is not just petition. Petition is a small part of prayer, but mostly prayer is a place of building relationship. That when you have spent time with somebody you love, you should know them better. True or true? How comes that you spend more time with somebody you love, yet you have no clue about him at all? Because if I spend one hour with him, I should be able to know something today that I didn't know yesterday. Because I've spent a little more. And the more you spend time with him, the more you know his wants, the more you know his desires. Did you know that there are some people in our life we have spent time with, even our parents or our guardians, that there are things we cannot ask from them? You know, ikitu, usiombe mbuyo. Situnajue yo? Eh? How comes we don't know God? We come with the same thing. Eh? Because we have taken prayer as petition, a place where you are ordering. And now when you add to the African uh, witchcraft, it becomes worse. Hmm? Because you'll always think as prayer uh, to be war. Eh? 
Because our mentality is that prayer is war. But anytime you come in the place of prayer, it's a place of war. <laughs> so you must eat. Huh? And then you must put a, a, a warfare. Uh, it's called, um, what do they call these Zulus when they are, hey, hey, hey. Huh? War cry, yes. War cry. You must have a war cry. And you must also change your voice. Because when you change your voice, my dear brother, the devil is scared. <laughs> no, a voice does not scare. Eh? <laughs> it is authority, isn't it? A soprano policeman, a bass policeman, a what policeman is the same. If he says like this, you just stand. doesn't care whatever volume he has used. In fact, the more powerful they are, the less they scream. Did you notice? Mm. <laughs> so, before we come to the reading of the prayers, and then you'll understand, take time to read the prayers in scripture. You'll understand how men of God moved in prayer. Their purpose was a bigger purpose. You see, we can learn from the model that Jesus gave us. He says, and when you pray, because it's the disciples that looked at him and said, hey, this prayer is different. Master, teach us how to pray. And he says, when you pray, say, our Father, because that is relationship, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Are you seeing? These are greater purpose. There is a kingdom. You, you have consciousness that you are living in a kingdom. And that the purpose of God is for his kingdom to grow. So when you get into prayer, you understand that you are in a place of family, you are in a place of government, and you are in a place of relationship. So it guides the way you speak. And then, when Paul is writing, you realize that every time that men and women are praying, you'll, you'll get their personality in the prayer. You, you are going to get their personalities in prayer. And their, their ministry, their grace in prayer. Because how Daniel prays is very different. How Hosea, for example, expresses his prayer is very different. The way Nehemiah prays is very different. You'll find their personality in prayer. So even in prayer, there is no uniformity in prayer. Because there is something that we learn in marriage. It's called love language. Love language. Uh, have you had something like that? The way one person expresses love or accepts love or receives love is different. There's somebody who can buy a flower. And that day will just be awesome. There's a guy, a lady who can buy a flower and a same boy, seriously. Ngenipa pesa, maziwa. They're, they're, you know, and, and, uh, and your friend, when you stay for a long time, you'll know the kind of language your friends accept, isn't it? There are people when they just buy ice cream, isn't it? And then you walk on the path. Uh, that is love. There are some of them that you just send a text or you do something. There is somebody you must say, I love you. Repeat it as many times as possible for it to sink in. There is somebody, that would be a nuisance, isn't it? I heard it in the morning, it's enough, isn't it? There are some, if you held their hands because they are aesthetic, they are, you touch. When you touch, you hold their hands, he says, ah. There are some who, just watch around. Even there are couples, when they are presenting themselves, you try to touch their hands, it's just anatoanisha mikono. Because that's not their language. You understand? So you must express yourself. You, you, when you get into a prayer, before you get to the content of prayer, when you get to prayer, you must understand, you are you. You are not somebody else. You are not praying like your pastor. Huh? Do you know you can go to a church and find all Christians praying like their pastor? The tongues are the same. The way they modulate their voices is the same. No, use your language. Use your language to pray. Because God understands your language. The way you feel it, isn't it? The way you feel it. 
Because, and most of us, you'll, you'll, wonder, you, you'll wonder, because they are very eloquent and very expressive, but when you tell them to pray, they say, eh, me, I can't pray. Why? Because they are, in their mind, they're thinking prayer is a different way. You must have another voice for you to pray. You must have another, a way of arranging words. And you must pray with the correct version. Eh? Yeah? <laughs> because God does not hear NIV. God, does God hear NIV? Eh? God does not understand NIV. Thou art Lord. <laughs> because Christians, how many people honestly here love prayer? Yeah, you love prayer. Mm? You see why most people don't love prayer is because the way prayer has been presented. And then somebody has told you, prayer is hard work. Eh? But it works. <laughs> they say, ah, this, I, don't, I don't want to do that hard thing. <laughs> but if you understand prayer is a place of relationship and intimacy, your attitude changes. Uh -huh. Say, Lord. And if you look at the book of Psalms, Psalms is interesting because David, David was a very emotional person. Eh? Because you can't divorce. You see, no, wonder, no matter how you say don't be emotional, you can't divorce emotion out of worship. Do you know that? You can't divorce emotions out of worship. Because if you read scripture, you'll find a very emotional heaven. Very emotional. So David was a very emotional person. And when David came before God, he didn't say, it is well. Thou art the Lord, it is well. It depended on his moods. When David came before the Lord, he said, kill them all. I want my enemies dead, Lord. They are cursing me. They are, I don't like them. That was him. By the time he left the prayer room, he was... You call it Uhushuka, isn't it? He had, you know, released everything inside of him. And that is why you are finding a problem of these pent-up emotions. Because if you have nobody to talk to, talk to God. Tell him exactly how you feel. You say today, Lord, imagine I broke my nail. And that, that. <laughs> yeah. And the way I'd taken time to make it. Imagine. Why? Because if, if you find, let me tell you something. You have emotional imbalance and other issues because you have not found a place of intimacy with God. Because if you find that place. That's where the scripture says, love the Lord of your, your God with all your strength, with all your meaning. That when you love God enough, you will not have strength to do anything else. Or to look for other, other people. When you love God enough, takes away all your strength, takes away all your energy, all your emotions, it takes away everything. Now let's go to prayer. Uh, Ephesians 1, 15. It says, Now, since I heard of your faith in God and your love for the saints, what? I cease not. Verse 16. I cease not to make mention of you in my prayers. Thanking God for you. I cease not. Meaning he's continuous. Cease not. Meaning is continuous. Prayer is not a one minute activity. It's not an activity. It's a life. Prayer. You breathe through prayer. You walk through prayer. Prayer is your life. Yeah? Prayer is your life. That means the position or the posture of prayer is 24-7. You are in the presence of God 24-7. You'll not be pray in the presence of God in church. No. And we told you church is the gathering of the saints, isn't it? Wherever saints gather, that is church for them. That is why there is the church that meets at Ephesus, the church that meets at this house, wherever you are, you are in a place of prayer. When you're in that classroom, you're in the place of prayer. Where, when you're in that matatu, you're in the place of prayer. When you're visiting your friends and you're chatting, you're in the place of prayer. I cease not to thank God for you. 
mentioning you in my prayers. He says that the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, let me ask you something. Anytime you're praying for your friends, anytime you're praying for the, your loved ones, how many of us have prayed that God, I want you, I want to pray for John that you may reveal yourself to him. Even most times when we are seeking for prayer from people, it's about something, isn't it? I'm looking for school fees, pray with me. Mostly it's pray for me. Because by the time you're praying, he's just eating ugali. Hmm? Imagine, when you are laboring for somebody else, he's just eating ugali. <laughs> he does not even remember to pray for himself. That me, that's why we need to pray with people, not for people. You understand? As you pray, I join you in prayer. Says that God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And Paul says, that I may know him. I wish all of your friends would pray, oh God, that my friend may know you. That you labor for one hour talking about God. Reveal yourself to my friend that he may know you. Let your revelatory knowledge be open to him. Because you see, once he know him, everything else is, is going to fall in place. Even the, the demonic attacks that you think he has or the altars that he has, because that is a new theology in church about those things. All those things will fall in place once he has revelation. Do you know revelation can make you free? And you learned yesterday when Wesley was saying, even deliverance is a message. Preach deliverance. Do not carry out deliverance. He says, preach deliverance, preaching. You'd, you'd find it's interesting that when the multitudes came to him, the Bible says, and when Jesus saw the multitude, he had compassion on them, and then he make them, made them sit down and he taught them. You'd think he would go in, he's going to say, no, bring me an anointing oil and bring a session. All of you come forward. What do you need? What do you need? No. He told them, sit down. I want to teach you. Because if your eyes are opened, ah, so many things are going to change in your life. It's your eyes. You know why you are stuck with that boyfriend? It's not that you lack self-control. Your eyes are the problem. When your eyes are opened, <laughs> you say, John, get out of this house. Go, 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 go. Why? Your eyes are... But let me ask you something. That day when you got a, a, a boyfriend, eh? and you're thinking you are going to die without him, He's, he's my life. He's my everything. Let me ask, how are you managing now? How, how are you managing? You just realize you didn't die, isn't it? You didn't die. You didn't die. Why? Because there is a blindness that is on you. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says the God of this world has blinded their eyes, isn't it? Lest we be ignorant of his schemes. 2 Corinthians 2.11 We are ignorant of his schemes. The God of this world has blinded their eyes that they may not see. So Paul was saying, above everything else, God, open their eyes. That God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Wisdom is the right application of knowledge. You are not successful just because you know something. Uh, you are successful because you know how to apply what you know. You guys are in school, you'll know that when you're being taught in class, you're not being taught the specificities of the problems that you're going to solve in your, academy, in your exams. Isn't it? Because questions come twisted. But what the teacher teaches you is concept, isn't it? He teaches you a concept that you're able to apply no matter how the question is framed. So, a good teacher will break down the concept to you once you understand the the principle of a problem, 
Then he will do what we call the classwork, meaning he will give you an example of a problem and apply that concept to that problem together with you so that you are able to follow, isn't it? Then later he's going to give you what we call homework. Well, by the time you go to study by yourself, he's going to ask you, please take this concept, go and apply it to the, some of these problems and, and come tomorrow we see how successful you have been. True? And there are teachers here. And then eventually, after a while, you sit down and say, now we've given you one hour to apply this concept to these problems. This is not the exact problem we did in classwork. Or this is not the exact problem we did in homework. But this problem, you can apply the same concept if you understood the concept. So, your intention and your key does not lie in solving the problem you are given, eh? but understanding the concept, isn't it? Because most of us have even revised so many past papers. Eh? <laughs> a letter past paper, you know not key file. You know not key file, you know not key file. You know not key file, you know not key file. You know not key file, you know Question three. But they twist it a little bit and they say, sit for it. <laughs> Your problem is not in solving the problem. Your problem is that you didn't get the concept. If you get the concept out of this, it changes how you view things. So wisdom. He says, God, give them wisdom. You don't tell them, God, let him not be a fornicator. Let him not be a liar. No, God, God, give him wisdom. Because when you give him wisdom, God, teach him to manage time. How many people have been to time management classes? And we've sent motivation speakers in your school. Time management, 14 ways of time management, the principles of what? The dangers of procrastination, the what of what? Then he leaves you excited because that week he says, Hey, Jen, he, he week is asani meamua. How long does it take? Seven full days from the eighth day. So I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Because you've just gone back. Why do, what, what don't you have? Wisdom. Wisdom. Because once you know wisdom. So, let me tell you, my sisters and brothers, there are important things to pray for than what we pray for. Eh? Pray for principles of life, not the symbols of life. Because most of us are praying for symbols. God, give me this and give me that. Give me that. No, those are kindergarten prayers. Once you start growing in God, you say, God, I want to know you. The Bible says, those who take pleasures in your righteous cause. Men and women who are concerned about the kingdom of God. He says, God, you have sent me to this school. What is your purpose for me? What is my assignment here? Because once you know your assignment, God is going to resource your assignment. Remember, God sends his resources according to your assignment. Yeah? My assignment requires speed, so God gives me a car. My, my assignment needs millions, so God resources that assignment. My, re my assignment requires me to look a certain way, so God brands me, isn't it? So, it's not the branding I'm praying for. I'm praying for the clarity of my assignment, so that once I know the clarity of my assignment, I can brand it. But you can all be dressed up and f nice makeup without knowing where to go. What is the profit of that? Hmm? The, the eye pencils and the foundations only make sense if the purpose is there, isn't it? If you have a gig, right? But if you have nowhere to go... <laughs> so pray that God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, will... And I, and, and I pray, when you're praying about this, you'll understand this guy is spending a lot of time in the place of intimacy, knowing God, understanding God. Because he says, come with me, sit with me, and understand that you may know me. Isn't it? God has called you to a place of intimacy. There is a celestial board meeting that he has called you. Let's talk. Reason together. Scripture says, let us reason together. 
But most of us have filled our prayer session with binding and loosing. And, you know, bringing down. And we are importing prayers from somewhere else. Yeah? Bringing prayers and then seeking for scriptural reference to, 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 have, to use. They are called prayer points. Hmm? I want you everybody to speak to your stars. Hmm? Speak to your stars. Say my star, my star. Seriously, and we are telling people astrology. We are te teaching people astrology. Let your star locate you. Let your star locate you. Seriously. Huh? Seriously. People don't want to know God's will. They just want to get stuff. Because it's a consumption, uh, materialistic environment we are operating in. Where you just get. We're just receiving. Lift up your hands, everybody. Say, I receive. You see? Everyone, you just, you just want. You see, if you understand that, then you also understand the place of prayer. God, there is certain powers that God has delegated to you, given to you to exercise. For example, one of it is moving mountain. You say, if you mark 11.23. It says, if you have faith as little as a mustard seed, you shall speak to this mountain. Be removed and be cast into the sea. And doubt not, but believe that whatever you have said you have, you, you shall come to pass. You shall have whatsoever you say. Say, whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you have it and you shall have it. So he has given you powers to move the mountain. You say, speak to the mountain. He has commanded you, speak to this mountain, tell it, be removed. But you are saying, God, Please remove this mountain. God, please remove this mountain. He has said, you speak to. So when you get wisdom, <laughs> even your prayers change. You cry because of the burden you've had for the kingdom, not because of the emotional breakdown you are going through. Oh God, he told me I'm not worthy. Oh Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Dada, meona buana. Amona buana ndio, lakini si yule buana. The knowledge of Him. How many people labor in place of prayer that I may know Him? How, how many times have you entered their place of prayer just to say, Lord, my prayer is to know You? I'm taking my, my time out of the pleasures of this world. Just to know you. That I may know a different aspect of God. How many? But most of us, we are going to a season of fasting. Okay. Write down your prayer needs. Because it's a shopping list. In these 40 days, you are going to get whatever you want. So please write. Kabla Jaisha is season. A new hairstyle. Eh? Some things like, I love two people. How can I know the one? The one. Hey. Na, na kwanza wambiangi mungu, if it is even the will of God, you just wa, you have given him two options, A and B. Tell me who is the one. You don't want the other answer that is none of them. Because uh -uh. you already come to a place of prayer knowing what. Let me ask you something. How do you feel usually when you are telling somebody a story and you know she's not listening but waiting to talk? Then how do you feel like if your story is not uh, heavy enough? Like unamambia, by the way, uh, what I was going through, aki nikikwambia, nini na nini na nini, unamaliza hivi, unafikiria, atasema, hey, hey, iyo, iyo ni challenging. Unakwambia, wacha iyo. Eh? Wacha iyo vitu nase. Wacha sasa nikwambia mind. How do you feel? You feel like just ni balloon to him megongwa even a toothpick, <laughs> And that's how we are in the presence of God. We have no time for him at all, at all. I want this, I want this, I want this. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. May the grace. People are gone. And he's standing there waited. Vileni Mengoje he did all this time. 
Ushawe kuwa na date ya anticlimax. It is not what you expected. <laughs> Kwanza he's talking too much. He's not listening. He's just telling you things. Una feel commanded, eh? Another lady told me, alikuja tu kuniambia God told me and by the way, that's the worst thing you can ever say. Mungu aliniambia nitakuoa. Akasema na so unajua Mungu akikuambia sasa sina opinion, mimi siwezi changia. Lazima nifuate tu, yes Lord, you are servant. <laughs> no, leave God out of it. Hiyo ni hiyo uliona in hallucinations uko nazo. But if you pray for wisdom and revelation eh in the knowledge of him god watu wengine sielewi bible sielewi nini have you ever gone to a place of prayer say lord hii kitu nimesoma why am i not understanding open my eyes let me see the truth in your word isn't it uh, david was praying that say lord open my eyes that i may see the truth in your word How many people have ever done a prayer meeting just to say Lord let us understand your word There are bigger things in life to pray about hmm? In the knowledge of him he says that your eyes being enlightened you may know the hope of your calling The hope of your calling You see is it vitu what you are depressed you are discouraged you are whatever ni kwa nini macho yako hayajafunguka kuona the hope of your calling the hope of your unajua calling yako ni rich namna gani salvation see at you enlisted kama 4k club at umeingia debating club no it's not a club like that there is something beyond what we can see there is life here and life after so if you can see the hope of your calling and that things will not you see scripture tells us if you read scripture you re- realize that Even when you know things are bad right now they will eventually be better. That's the promise of scripture. He says in this world you'll have many trouble isn't it? Worry not I'm on top of it. So you know no matter what I'm going through tomorrow is better. Saying the hope of your calling that your calling has hope. Your calling is not hopeless. That's what Paul is praying that the Ephesians may know that their hope is not their future is not hopeless there is something beyond right now they may be struggling with other things going through hardship and trouble but your future is hopeful the future is better sai marafiki wamekupotea kwa sababu you are the only virgin one remaining or you are the only one without boyfriend you know right now the trend is to have a boyfriend huh grab the next trouser around you don't hang alone She's just 19. This is my boyfriend. Boyfriend, where? Where are you going? You you two people. Where? Huh? Then it is worse. You ask her, so uh, how is your purpose? What do you want to do in life? <laughs> I'm not even sure. I'm not then you ask the boy. Maze, sijui ni anzie wapi? You see, are you seeing the confusion? Then you say, "Oh, the witchcraft. There is no witchcraft." In fact, you don't need to be bewitched to fail because you are headed there. You have planned your way to that place. Hmm? I keep telling people, wewe kama kweli anakupenda, si atakupenda tu 20 uh, 2020 bado na 2021. Hii ni kwa nini lazima umbuke sasa hii? Ni haraka ya nini? <laughs> what is it? What, what is the hurry? Kwa sababu unaona ukimwacha kesho Na hii mistake zako you'll get a better person isn't it So una book mapema unafunga kafuli alafu amuruhusu kuongea na mtu yoyote huh? Hold the hand Twen- Jemo unaenda wapi twende huko <laughs> Jemo unaenda wapi <laughs> Saying hope and most of us the decisions we make today is because we are not seeing the future If you see what assignment God has put in front of you for tomorrow, you'll not even be choosing the girlfriend you have today. That's why people change wives. Because ameolewa hivi, amepanda madaraka, amekuwa mdosi, anaona huyu sasa kizungu hawezi ongea mbele ya watu, hawezi fashion ni mbaya, 
Unaona? He gets another wife. Why? Because he didn't see. Sindi He didn't see. And when you look at things with the perspective of eternity, your decisions will be different. Unajua kwa nini una make decisions sasa hivi? Kwa sababu unaona hapa tu. Unaangalia hivi deliverance zima man. Unaona 1 2 3. So your world is just here. Who are you seeing? Just this ones. Hakuna mrembo kama huyu. Haujawahi kutana naye. Because haujawahi toka hapa zima man. Then unaenda KU, una join KU. Unapeleka symposium. Wanakuita sijui Science World uh, Makerere University. University zimetoka huko Chigali Kampala. Wapi wapi? Warandisi wanakuja hapa wanasema praise God. Sema wow. Huh? Wow. Praise God. Eh? Unafikiria people ni evolution, people are evolving. Hapana she has always been there. Just in another part of this world. Hmm? Hi, Jemone aje. I like us to take a break. So, macho tu. Ushaona mtu mwenye macho amefunguliwa? Huh? I want us to take a break. No, no, no. It is not you, it is me. I'm trying to find myself. I, I don't deserve you. I know you'll get somebody you deserve. You you are a gentleman, you are nice. Please, umwambie tu ulikuwa mjinga. Because you make those decisions believing that your life is ending now. Maisha yako iko tu saa hii na inaisha saa hii. So usipokuwa na huyo kijana, huyo msichana, eh, siju kama utatobo. But once you have perspective of eternity, the temporal things do not move you. See, they all come in sizes, they come in whatever, all kind of branding, just pass. Your future is before you, isn't it? because he says the things that we do not see are permanent the things that we see not are temporal the see, things we see are temporal the things we see not are permanent so he was saying that your the hope of your calling and he says the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints he was not saying that your future is not only hopeful your future is rich your future is rich Your future is rich. He was praying for the Ephesians says don't make your decisions according to your present circumstances. You don't build permanent structures under temporal situations. Ah uh, ah, uh, now that you don't have a nice dress and you don't have enough money and bonga points does not mean you engage with him because he has 20 or 30 shillings to be giving to you. No. You are rich. You might not be able to hold it now, but your future is rich. The riches of your glory of his glory in the inheritance of the saints there is an inheritance that is predestined for you before the beginning of time look at what paul was praying saying that they may know they are rich this revelation may hit their spirit to know that they are rich and if they are rich then even their kind of prayer will change They are not unajua kuna ile poverty mentality prayer then there is ownership prayer hata tajiri kuna vile anaomba pesa na kuna maskini vile anaomba pesa si ndio nataka kujua vile maskini anaomba pesa kumbuka tu vile wao unaomba So he says how rich how rich and this is a prayer for enlightenment I told you the first prayer of Paul to the Ephesians is a prayer for enlightenment we are going to look at the second prayer in chapter 3 the prayer for enablement 
Even when Jesus is praying for his disciples, he says, he's talking about the deep things. He's not talking to them about give them the symbols of success. He's telling them about the state of their heart, that they may be one, that they may know you, the Father, that they may do this. It's about their heart, because once their heart is, is right, everything will be fine. Because the heart of the problem is the problem of the heart. Once the heart has been rectified, the software is the problem. You see, once your software is, is right, then when you send a document, you open, isn't it? Anybody da, da, done computers here? He says, you are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. They are on your machine. But you can't open PDF because you don't have the software. So the issue, you don't tell him to resend. Don't say, God, give me this. God, send me this, this document. No, you say, no, download the right software. It is already on your machine. Open. Once you have the right software, you are able to open. God, give me power of self-control. Power. Here you go, Absas. It is a fruit. It's a fruit. Niki mwona feel hivi. Really? Yeah? A preacher came here and he said, it is not about what you're feeling because your feelings are legit. It's just what you do about them. How many times have you felt like slapping your teacher? Or slapping a policeman? So we just feel like, who policeman is ending him? Lakini usha mchapa kofi. Kwa sababu unajua consequences. So it's not what you're feeling. It's, it's, you are in charge of life. God did not give us a religion. That's why if you understand this, when you come to a place of prayer, you know that you are government. You are not religion. Re religion is the formation of men. But we are called to government. He says of the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end. God did not bring us religion. Because the order and the ceremonies did not come before the fall. It's the Levitical order that came with, uh, with order, with hierarchy, and with ceremonies, and with titles. Those things were not there. That's why I told you we read first the book of uh, uh, first Eph uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10. It's talking about uh, that we br bring th everything under him. If you read now Ephesians chapter 2 verse 18. Come on, give us Ephesians. And my time is up. Just, just give me this one verse, then I close. Chapter, chapter 2, verse 18 and 19. Read this with me. It says, Now stop there and let's, let's read again slowly. It says, Now watch and kulize. Bishops want access. Sindio? Through him, only pastors have access. Through him, only veterans in salvation have access. Through him what? We both have. Now let's read verse 19. So this, this is telling us was it all? You don't come to church as if you are a stranger. As if this is a strange place. You are citizens. Hmm? Unajua watu wanakuja kwa altar ni kama eh? Unajua hapo ni reverend tu wanakuanga comfortable.